Kathleen, welcome to the program. Hi. Liz, how did you get into theater? I got into theater um, very young. My mom started me in dance class and ballet mm -hmm. when I was four years old. Mm -hmm. And I started doing musical theater when I was eight. And wow. my first show was The Hobbit. A musical version of The Hobbit. I didn't know there was a musical version. <laughs> there <but> is, <laughs> for kids. And I was a dancing spider. You know the spiders that uh, try to eat the hobbits yes. <laughs> that are in the woods? I was one of those. But I, we danced. We did ballet. Okay, well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So, so with this, um, you say your parents got you in, into this? Yeah. Um, did they have their own production company? Or is it just, no, they just, hey, this is something interesting to do? Or? Um, my mom and I, we're hmm. both, we're very similar. Um, she's always been of the motto that you should just try everything. Right. So I grew up playing sports and doing theater and oh, cool. doing all sorts of things. And mm -hmm. so dance was just one of those things for her to have me try yeah. and see if I liked it. And, and I did. So what other things did you try? You said you tried all these different things. What other mm -hmm. things did you try? Oh, man. When I was growing up, the Mighty Ducks were really big, okay. the Mighty yep. Ducks yep. movies. And so I played street hockey so much. And I played, <laughs> and I played soccer mm -hmm. on a bunch of teams. And I played softball on some traveling teams. Mm -hmm. Got pretty far into softball. Um, so I tried those. I really wanted to play football, but I was a right. girl and little. Were so. you a tomboy? Or, or I was. I was a tomboy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, nothing wrong with that. You got to do different things. Why yeah. not? Of, yeah. of the different sports, which sport did you like the best? Softball. I still softball. play softball. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. That's so, it. <laughs> I, I know people say that you have to be able to see the curve of the ball and stuff like that. You know, just oh, sure. that split second. And if you can't get that, forget it. Oh, even then, I'm not the best, but it's super fun, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty tiny, so I play co ed co -ed mm. softball right now with my husband. Mm. And we have a team that we've played on for years now. Mm. And uh, and it's always fun. It's hard playing against boys, though, as a girl, because mm -hmm. even if you have a good hit, mm -hmm. it, my good hits go like halfway into the outfield, and the mm -hmm. boys just stand there and catch it. And I'm, <laughs> it's very sad. <laughs> so where are you from? I'm from Kansas. Okay. I grew up in Manhattan, Kansas, where Kansas State University <laughs> is. <laughs> Which is why you went to KSU. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh huh. It's the Little Apple. I, you, <laughs> you know, Manhattan, yeah, okay, I, can, I yeah, get it, yeah, Manhattan. We even have a ball drop, drop like, oh the my goodness. Manhattan. We're cool, <laughs> we're cool. So what was it like growing up in Kansas? Um, you know, it's not, it's not that different than here. Yeah. <laughs> less opportunities, there's less to do, like theater for me growing up was school. You right. did school and then there was a Parks and Rec department that Correct. did one summer musical. Sure, yeah. So you did the one summer musical and then school. Sure. And that was it. Um, mm -hmm. Even if you go over to Kansas City, which is about two and a half hours away, mm -hmm. there were more opportunities because right. there's some professional theaters there sure. and stuff. But um, I interned in Kansas City after my junior year of high school mm -hmm. at um, Starlight Theater. It's a big professional theater up there. And all the other kids that I was interning with, I realized had done so much more than me. When because I they had there. the opportunity. Because they had the opportunity. Right. And I didn't. I, mm -hmm. I, my resume was completely... High school shows and middle school shows. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Show choir. You know, it's nothing yeah, right. wrong. But these kids had already done, per, like, one of them had done a professional tour with, like, right. Annie. I mean, one of right. them, you know, it's just, they'd just done stuff. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, it's kind of interesting because I, uh, I uh, grew up in high school with someone who did tours. Mm -hmm. She played uh, Liesl on a nine-month tour. So it was one, where is she? She never made a big deal about it. But, mm -hmm. you know, well, you know, you know where's, where's Marty? And <laughs> it's Marty Gonfell. And next thing you know, oh no, she was on a tour at Sound of Music. She wanted to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, but I think she was the shyest thing in school, but That's not funny. on stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, tell us about some of the shows you did in high school. In high school? Let's see. Um, my first show in high school was Brigadoon. Wow, yes, I was. Uh -huh. yes. Which is a good show. Yes. And I was a dancer in it. I, I have always, I'm, since I'm tiny, I've always right. gotten pinned as a dancer, so <laughs> I'm Spot usually, tight cast, yeah, 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 I'm usually the dancer girl. Yeah, right. um, so I was a dancer in Brigadoon, and then mm -hmm. um, after that we did The Miracle Worker. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I was a cheerleader at the time, so I had to miss a ton of rehearsal for Miracle Worker, so mm -hmm. I couldn't really go for Helen Keller, right. but I was one of the girls in the school right. with Helen Keller. and. Um, then we did Alice in Wonderland, a, mm -hmm. a non-musical, just right. someone wrote it, I don't mm -hmm. really even remember who. Oh, their own version. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a different yeah. version. Yeah. Um, and I was understudying Alice mm -hmm. and um, 
played a bunch of random parts that popped in and out. So that was fun. That was freshman year. That was your freshman. <laughs> that was my freshman year. <laughs> Sophomore year, we did Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream cool. Coat, yeah. and that was very fun. Mm -hmm. And I was um, the best part of my high school career was I was a goat. In <laughs> <laughs> I was the goat that they right. kill for right. the blood to put on right. the coat. Right. Mm -hmm. I was that goat. <laughs> it was the best part of my career. Is that what you put on your resume? <laughs> yeah, goat. Goat. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone's like the goat that they kill. <laughs> That's me. Yep. So. so yeah. What shows you did in high school, what was your favorite? My favorite? Um, there's a tie. I did The Foreigner right. my junior okay. year, and I was yes. Betty. Yes. And it was fun part, yes. so much fun. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun. And my mom told me when they put that wig on me and you know made me look older, I looked just like my great-grandma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was pretty funny. I never met her, but mm -hmm. my mom was just like, ah. <laughs> she was scared. Uh, and then we did Les Miserables my senior year. Wow. Yeah. And that's just the scale of Les Miserables, you know, we had wow. the, the revolving stage and, oh my goodness. and yeah. uh, there were 150 people in the show. How'd you keep everybody on stage? <laughs> they, were, they would build like these platforms and there'd be people up on different levels and uh -huh. it spun and like we had two spinning platforms mm -hmm. actually. And so I, I, you know, they were really good at, at putting large quantities of people on stage. Well, it gets people to the show. <laughs> yeah. People interested about it. Yeah, so it was just the sheer scale of Les Mis mm -hmm. was really fun, and the music is so good. That, oh, yeah, it's awesome, um, yes. Yeah, it was just very, very fun, and I, I helped student direct Les Mis with, mm -hmm. with you know, our drama teacher. And, right. And so that was fun. I got to um, block the bishop scene, and, and that's just one of the more touching scenes, mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. in the show. Absolutely. So yes. it was very fun. I'm thinking about the, the, the revolt, oh my goodness, with 150 people. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, not everyone got to be in that part. <laughs> or die. Yeah. The only, really, there weren't a lot of scenes that everyone was right, on right, stage, right. so, yeah, there, not everyone was in that part. <laughs> so, so after high school, you know, you've got these options to go to colleges. Obviously, mm -hmm. KSU is close by, but mm -hmm. why KSU as opposed to some other place? Did you your know, parents make you want, you know, say you got to stay close? I mean, that no, happens a lot, too. Is I it a cost issue? I wanted to go. You wanted to go I there. wanted to leave. And I, I went and I auditioned for musical theater programs around the right. country. Right. Um, and I got some scholarships to mm -hmm. leave. I got right. a full-ride scholarship to do musical theater. Wow. At Stevens College, it's in Missouri, and mm -hmm. and it looked pretty enticing. Although it was an all girls school, so that yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm sure the guys come up visit. <laughs> yeah, well, and they ship boys in apparently yes. for their program. But um, I I don't know. That was just a point in my life where I had to make a decision on what mm -hmm. what I wanted out of my life. Sure. And uh, I ended up deciding not to to pursue theater as a degree in college. I ended okay. up getting my degree in gerontology. Gerontology. Uh huh. Do you use that now? Yes. Yes, I am an activity coordinator at a senior center. Okay. And it is the best job I could have, really. Well, how did you get into that? Or no, that's something you came upon yourself. How did that happen? I mean, my mom always, like I said, encouraged me to do lots of things. Sure. So I mean, I think just with my involvement in like show choir and things mm -hmm. like that, we would go around to senior centers sure. sometimes. But other than that, I mean, I. Growing up, I idolized my grandpa. Like, right. <laughs> if you could compare him, like, to, if you could com compare my life to the Lion King, right. he was my Mufasa. Oh. <laughs> so he was just, I just loved everything about him. And he died when I was 12, and he went through um, a hospice care program. And seeing him go through hospice care, I actually got a really big interest in hospice when I was mm -hmm. young, like yes. 12. Wow. And um, ever since then, I've loved love visiting elderly people. I've loved hospice. Mm -hmm. I've volunteered with hospices mm -hmm. and, and I volunteered in, in nursing homes and mm -hmm. so getting a degree in gerontology made a lot of sense to me. Wow. Yeah. So gerontology, uh, but you did, but obviously you did things in college too. Yeah, I did so, theater all through college. Right. So I figured I could get a degree in some in gerontology but right. just get the theater experience as sure. well. And you have both worlds. So did you take classes in college or in theater or no? Um, I took a couple. Yeah. Because uh, I started off, I still, I thought one path I was going to take was to get um, my undergrad in theater and then mm -hmm. my master's in drama therapy. Okay. And then focus on the geriatric yes. population. Yeah. But um, I ended up going a different route and just getting my bachelor's in gerontology. Okay. So I started off with some theater classes. Right. 
and uh, took some of those, the fundamentals of acting classes and some sure. of that. But. Back to the gerontology, is there anything in particular that you interesting, enjoyed, or just like, oh man, I really want to do this, but I really don't want to do this class. It's, it's not something I, you know, I said, yeah, I got to know this, but... With gerontology? Yeah. You know, I loved all of my gerontology classes. I found all of it interesting. We would have very interesting conversations, and a lot of them would encourage you, like your intro to gerontology class would encourage us. We had to do so many interviews with elderly people, and you know, you run out of right. grandparents after a well, while. Sure, sure, yeah. <laughs> so you have to go to like a nursing home and find sure. someone that'll sit right. down and talk to you. And, right. and I've just always loved hearing people's stories, so that oh, class, the stories are, are awesome. Yeah, everyone has a story. Oh, I don't absolutely. care if they tell absolutely. you right away that they could tell you they lead the most boring life, but they've right. got a story in there. Absolutely. And so, uh, and it, they want to tell it to someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it, that was one of my favorite parts of college was going around just interviewing people, like you know their reactions to when World War II was over, yes. like how it felt for them, and you know just asking mm -hmm. them about all of these huge historical events that I didn't experience. Mm -hmm. So it was really neat. What are some of the shows you did in college? Um, my first show in college was Pippin, and um, it was fun. I was one of the players, mm -hmm. just the chorus players, mm -hmm. and it was an interesting show. Pippin's. <laughs> okay, what, like, Pippin's what, what's so interesting about Pippin? Come on. <laughs> well, it's Pippin. I mean, when I when when I first got cast, I was one of the uh, dancers in the scene where um, Pippin is singing to the, the women, and you, you read in the script that it's an orgy scene. Okay, so what did you, how was this modified? <laughs> well, it's a ballet number, but okay. I read it and I first panicked because that's not something I want to do. <laughs> well, so. that's, a, that's an interesting point because actors at, at, at some point, uh, you know, and I'll call it career, whether the, the amateur or professional, uh, come to a role that makes them uncomfortable. Uh -huh. And you know, usually. So, what did you do about this? Well, conveniently for me, which was actually very inconvenient, I got so sick that semester, so sick <laughs> that I had to like drop out of life. I had to cut down. I was taking 18 credit hours. I had to drop down to 12. Right. Like they tried to put me in the hospital. Right. And I, yeah. I didn't want to go, so mm -hmm. I just like laid in bed at my mom's house, <laughs> and uh, so I had to drop out of the show. Before it even performed, so. Wow. Well, no, because I mean, it, it, it is an interesting question, but what do you do? You know, do you talk to the director about it? Sometimes they're your... accommodating, you know, sometimes yeah. they're like, no, this, the, this is my vision, you. get over it, you yeah. know, that kind of thing. And I said, well, and like, on the other hand, you know, depending on the audience is a big deal. You're like, mm -hmm. the, the director may be, he wants to do this, I want to do this avant garde. But your audience won't take it. Oh yeah. So guess what? You're doing it a little differently. Sure. And, <laughs> I'm, and I'm a pretty modest person, and I right. don't, I don't, like adult content isn't okay. I'm not one of those people that can do that. Like Spring Awakening, probably not my show. Forget it. Yeah. End of story. End of story <laughs> but yeah. you know, so I kind of know which shows I should sure. or shouldn't audition sure. for. Sure. No, <laughs> um, that's understandable. But I have, like, in the past, in college, I would, I would just politely ask the costumers, you know. Sure. I don't know what you have in mind for this costume, right. but I would love it if I could be pretty covered. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, that's and and that's they understand. were actually very, very nice to me Good. in college, Good. and they would be very accommodating to... I think it's how you ask, they said. Uh, I think a lot of that is in yeah. any industry, right? It's, yeah. It's just, just make your concerns known and... and just, yeah, respect them, and, yes. you know, but ask nicely. And yes. I got cast in college in the dark at the top of the stairs, and there's a little boy in the dark at the top of the stairs, Sunny. Okay. Um, and they wanted me to play the little boy and at auditions when I was reading for him and they were talking to me about it because they were, you know, unsure if they wanted to try to bring a boy out of the community sure. or have a little person, someone who's tiny like right, me, right, right. play the boy. Right. And so they were asking me if I would cut my hair into a boy cut and I was like, oh, I'm getting married in like five months and I don't think my husband wants to marry a little boy. <laughs> So I, so, so I told them no. They ended up still giving me the part and just wigging me. But okay. But, yeah. So a couple times in college, I had to just politely ask. <laughs> okay. Let's talk about preparation for a role. Okay. How do you like to prepare for a role? What do you do? Um. Well, I usually. So I'm kind of one of those people. If I get too excited about a role, I panic at auditions. <laughs> okay. I'm just like I'll I'll get like too concerned when right. I'm at auditions, mm -hmm. and so I will typically try to 
read the show mm -hmm. and learn a little bit about the character and then go to auditions and just do it's natural. I don't prepare a whole ton. Yeah. I keep songs, maybe like 15 musical theater songs ready to go right. to sing at all times. So I just pick out of those right. what I think will work. Unless, you know, there's a show that calls for something that's not, right. you know, that won't work from what I have prepared. But yeah, I, I probably am a bad example of that because I don't prepare very much because I will panic <laughs> at auditions. Okay. <laughs> I will. I'm weird like that. Well, well like I said, the, the role for the boy, obviously that, that's different. Mm -hmm. How did you prepare for the role of the boy? I went in there, I read about it, honestly, and just went in there pretty much cold, honestly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just did it how I thought the character would be. Like, I read up a little bit on, because people talk about how the dark at the top of the stairs, Sonny is, is William Inge, is kind of, that was him as mm -hmm. a little boy. Right. So I kind of read a little bit about William Inge, right. and a little bit about Sonny, but not much. I didn't even read the whole show. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just went in and did what I felt was... Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes I make the wrong choice doing things like that. But uh, well, it sounds like you have a natural instinct, or you know, to how a character needs to be played. Obviously, you know, directors have different things in mind. You know, sure, but they must see something. Sure. So well, know. my motto is "Go big, just go right. big, and see what the director wants." Sometimes you're very wrong, and sometimes <laughs> they're just excited that you're willing to make a choice. Right. Exactly. So. Make, make a choice. Go for it. Yeah. And then they'll tell you. Sometimes they'll tell you in auditions. No, I want to see something else, and sometimes right. they'll just take it and say, then oh, is so what you're going to do? Okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, it happens both ways. I mean, I recently auditioned for uh, The Fantastics, and I've yes, yes. always wanted to be Louisa in The Fantastics. Right. Like, one of my dream roles. Is that age back? Uh, yeah, at okay. age back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was so excited, and yeah. that was one of those, you know, like, I've listened to the CD for so long, and I mm -hmm. knew everything, and I was so excited about this part. And I went in there, and I was panicking at the audition because I just like wanted it oh, so bad, oh. you know. And so it was just one of those like, I ended up like, the way I saw the character wasn't the way that the director saw the character. Okay. And that's that's only nice for right? That's the director. Yeah, 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 and that's pretty much um, I could tell by the end of the audition that it just wasn't we weren't viewing the character in the same way. <laughs> Yeah, it happens, you know. It that's happens. fine. You know, <laughs> Elaine, Elaine's been around a long time. She, you know, yep. done lots of shows. You know, professional and she's and a nice lady. Uh, nice yeah. lady. Well. <laughs> she's actually been on stage quite a bit too. Um, so no, yeah. But, yeah, that's why it is. It happens. Um, <laughs> it happens. All right. So we, we you got the the role of the boy. You yeah. didn't get sick this time. No, <laughs> I didn't get sick this time. Well, let's talk about it. It's interesting. You said you, you can panic at auditions. Mm -hmm. How are you at test taking? I'm actually. Uh, I'm a pretty good test taker. So that's not, it's not Strangely. that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, you know, despite how long I've been on stage, I get nervous. I just do. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you channel that nervousness into your character? I have to fully immerse myself in the character. I have okay. to get to the point where I forget anyone else is there. And I think that's, when I'm on stage and I am the character, that's different than an audition. Because right. unless I can really zone in on the audition, you're right. pretty aware that you're auditioning and that right. someone's sitting there watching right. you and right. and so that just knowing that like I'm doing something for someone and they're watching me, that makes me panic. But right. if I when I'm on stage and I've been working on a character, mm -hmm. I'm that character. Right. So it doesn't I don't think about the audience anymore. Let's talk about acting technique. Mm -hmm. How do you get into the character? Do you have any particular actresses that, that you admire and you kinda of follow their technique or you have your own or you know, I don't, I think my technique has just come as like I have done shows, mm -hmm. honestly. Because sure. I can tell you, like, probably middle school and early high school, I, my characters are probably not very deep. <laughs> but um, I think through college is when I grew the most. I, I just find ways to connect to the characters. Okay. And I'm one of those people where I'll just... I'll goof around backstage and then I walk on stage and I'm just there. Right. I don't know, I find a way to make me the character and mm -hmm. and uh, I think there was one experience in college, um, we did dancing at Lunessa and okay. yep. um, the fun part about college is you have uh, professors that do right. different acting techniques, sure. try to teach sure. you different, sure. different techniques, right? Yeah. So this particular director had been studying mosaic acting. Okay. Which is largely not a very practiced okay, technique. I, 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 yeah, yeah, probably haven't heard of it, right? No, that's not so, something I subscribe to. <laughs> <laughs> so, mosaic acting and directing, the way you, you direct yeah. 
um, is you never block a show. The show is never like blocked. <laughs> and what you do, and, and all the auditions were for this, right. is you he would ask you to do the part differently, like play the part angry the whole time, play the right. part happy, and he just wanted well, to see how well, yeah. how well you could that adapt. That part I can understand. So but the then, blocky part is interesting. So then rehearsals, yeah. all we did for our like six weeks of rehearsals or whatever, mm -hmm. was we would go in and you would memorize the script pretty quick. Right. And you would go in and you would do the scenes with various intents or mm -hmm. circumstances. Like yeah. you would do the scene, all of you are 80 year old women, and right. do the right. scene. Right. And you'd, you'd go through the scene, right. you'd stop, you'd talk about it. Yes. Well, what could be used out of that? What yes. can't be used out of that? Uh -huh. What fits into your character? What doesn't fit? You know? <laughs> you know, that's interesting. I haven't heard of it. Mm -hmm. But in, a but the, the lot of techniques that you talk about it are very important. Mm -hmm. Their characterization. If, if you think about key elements of uh, of a character, I think you know, where did I come from? What am I going to do when I get on stage? What do I want? What happens if I don't get it? Mm -hmm. Those type things. You're exploring all those questions oh, yeah. through this technique. Mm -hmm. uh, you and know, so I, I focus on blocking. Like, what do you mean no blocking? But in fact, you're exploring different characters, uh, possibilities, and and a lot of you know, depending on who you talk to, some people tend to exclude certain options. Sure. It sounds like you wanted you to explore. Oh yeah, and beforehand. Yeah. And it's great because you really, really get to know your character, and you yes. get to know like what is just inherently wrong for your character to Good. do, like yes. what just doesn't feel right. Right. And what you're like, well, that's strange, but it, it works. Like this. Right. This makes sense with my character to do that, and uh, so it was interesting. Every rehearsal you do that, you right. eighty-year-old women or. Five-year-old girls, right. or like you all are desperately in love with this character, right. or you know, and you talk about it, and so by the time the show started, the director we would we would just do what came natural, right. whatever mm. happened happened, and right. um, he would come backstage at intermission. He'd be like, "That was great. Next time, don't do it like that. Just change <laughs> it." And you'd be like, "Oh, so it was very interesting because." you developed a very close relationship with everyone in the cast. And it was a pretty small cast. Dancing right. at Lunessa doesn't right, have a right. lot of people. And, you know, if someone was having a bad day, mm -hmm. it would probably translate into their character Absolutely. that day. Absolutely. And so my character was a jokester. She was mm -hmm. she, Maggie, and she was just she's supposed to be the comedic relief, generally. Right. If I had a bad day, mm -hmm. <laughs> Maggie was a lot less funny. <laughs> And I mean, maybe she was uh, maybe just more bitter that day, right. and that may or may not be more funny. But all the characters would then just like mold around mm -hmm. their interactions with Maggie right. were completely different that day than any other day. So you know, we never did the show the same. Sounds like listening is a big part of what you were doing. Oh, <laughs> you had to you had to pay a hundred percent attention to mm. your a other actors at all times. Otherwise, it would come across as true. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and what the funny part was, we would do the show, and we would people didn't know that it was mosaic acting. Right. They didn't know the technique. Right. They would come up and they'd be like, "That was the best blocking <laughs> I've ever seen," <laughs> and they're like, "It looked so real." And we're, and because it was. It's because it was organic, real. natural. I feel like yeah. it's natural. Um, yeah. <laughs> it was so funny. And you've probably seen it too in shows where you've seen a show and go, "Like, looks like blocking." And it's the only mechanical. reason because they hadn't motivated it. Oh yeah. yeah. And it sounds like yours were completely motivated, not because it wasn't planned, but because it was integral to your character. Oh yeah, and here's the thing, if your character wasn't motivated to move, you sat there. Right. You could sit there for who knows how long. <laughs> and you may yeah. not even you might not supposed to be in that in the next scene. Right. You could still be sitting there if nothing mm -hmm. motivates you to get right. off that stage. Right. So it became the job of the other actors if you knew that person needed to get off the stage. Right. Because you had to like tell a secret about them the next right. scene, you would motivate them off. You would find a way to get them <laughs> off the stage, you know, and without changing the lines, it was no, tricky. Absolutely, yeah. But it was it was funny. But it also helped like those stage mishaps that always happen. Mm -hmm. It helped because I remember one day, um, w one of the characters walked on stage and like, she must have just not done her hair that well that day because right. she hadn't done anything. She right. was just walking, mm -hmm. <laughs> but she walked on stage and it just fell down. <laughs> Okay. And, and we were like, oh, so I just went over and did her hair on stage while we had this scene right. and while we were talking. In character, right. And the rest of the people just kept mm -hmm. going around like normal. This sounds like a, an actor's dream. Yeah. But having worked tech before, how does that work with tech? <laughs> <laughs> like, no. they're not in their spot. How are they yeah. supposed to light them? <laughs> yeah, you know, it yeah. was, it was a, a more intimate theater and so they kind of just probably had 
so it's more minimal text. So if somebody changes the line or sounds a little different, or they skip to go back, we don't know where they are. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes the actors don't know. But if I guess if you're rooted in your character, that's not a problem. Sure. But if there's a tech cue that depends on it, we're hosed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're yeah I mean, the, the lighting and the sound cues must have been a little hard because pauses and things like that would change. But I think right. uh, they must have worked it out pretty well. Because, well, you know, they, it, yeah. Because they said, they say, you know, you, you, there's, it sounds like you had a really good rapport with the actors. They have to, obviously, mm -hmm. to, to be able to act this way. And that's what you want, really, in any production, whatever technique you use. The mm -hmm. problem is there's this, also this dance between tech and the actors, because we, you know, we, we always grumble as, as tech. They're not doing it the same way. They're not in the same spot. How am yeah. I supposed to? You know, how am I supposed to? You know, are they going to? You know, am, I, am I ready to do the sound cue or not? Yeah. <laughs> so that, we just don't know. And again, there has to be rapport, and, and it's a further distance because you know, tech. You know, tech and actors don't necessarily go together. Sure. You know, I think, I think they probably just had to generalize some of it more, like yes, there sure. was an area of the stage that was more right. the house, an area that was more outside. Sure, absolutely. So you, they just had to really pay attention. Because, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we would go, dancing at Lunessa, they have this radio, they have Marconi right, right. radio, and, and they would just go over and flip it on, and mm -hmm. like, they would, they had to have been watching us. Right, there you go, sir. Okay, they're flipping the radio, okay. <laughs> no, yeah. They're turning it off. Okay. I know, it probably was a nightmare. But the good news is that we didn't really have any prop people because yeah. if you left a prop backstage, you just went backstage and got your got prop it. and came right. back. Right. Right. <laughs> you just whatever said your line backstage and got it and came back. So <laughs> no, I, I don't know like that. That's interesting. But it, it's it's not to me actually it's not as different uh, uh, as I thought because to me the, the elements that you talk about in the mosaic uh, technique and call that. To me, are integral to really any technique. I don't really care what the technique. To me, that it's central. You know, knowing your character intimately. Mm -hmm. You know, so the staying in character. I mean, people have different philosophies that you stay a character on or off stage. You know, that's for each person. But but certainly on stage, you want to be true to your character. Sure. Because if you're not, it doesn't matter. They can figure that out. You know, out the audience. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. They don't have to know the play. They can tell. There's something. I don't know what it is. Then they can't, may not be able to put their finger on it. But they know. Yeah. There, there's something not right. It's not natural. Whatever. Sure. And I think having worked both ends of the spectrum. You know, you have this one director mm -hmm. that our whole show is based off of characterization. Right. I mean, there's nothing nothing to go on but who you think your character is, because right. it's not blocked. Right. And that's, I mean, <laughs> so there's that end of the spectrum, and then there's the other end of the spectrum where, you know, I've worked with directors that just cold put you there, and you figure out your motivation for moving, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you, you it's... It's different, you know, and shows go off wonderfully both ways. I had both right. both of those directors in college, right. the one mm -hmm. that character and the one that just, you know, mm -hmm. told you generally, well, your character is whatever, like whatever the little character snippet. So how do you get feedback? They would give you feedback, right. but like, oh, that didn't look natural. Figure it out. <laughs> Figure it out. You know, in, in community theater, there's there's all these different levels of experience that people come from. Sure. You have people off and it has nothing to do with training or not. Some people have sure. a, a wonderful natural instinct, An instinct yeah. of, of mm -hmm. character. Some people have a lot of training and probably still, they could still use some more training. But, but back to the character, what does it make it yeah, true? What works for them or not? Because I know there's some, there's some character, you know, people, uh, actors will say, just tell me how you want it. You know, don't, oh, don't yeah. help me with the motivation, just, just, just show me. How do you want it? Oh, yeah. If the director said, do it this way, he, was there. he got it instantly. <laughs> sure. It's like, what? Okay, and make it. And some people like that. I guess some people like total control. Just this is what you want. Mm -hmm. And then the others, it's more of a, the the actor's experience, and they're trying to help you to, you know, oh, yeah. explore your character. Let us have some fun with because that's most of what you have that you take yeah. away, right? Your experience uh, of, of the show. Yeah, and definitely, there's people that like different things. I I know in college mm -hmm. when when it was talked about how Dancing at Lunessa was going to be directed, there mm -hmm. were some actors that they wouldn't. Wouldn't have auditioned for that show. Right. For, Just knowing that. They no. They were terrified of it. Mm -hmm. They would never do something like that. How did you take it? I thought it was. I was actually scared, but I thought it would be a challenge, like yes. an interesting challenge to see if I could really get into a character that well. Right. You know. So it was. It was cool, and it worked. You know, because okay. it's it's an intense show, and there were times that you would just like. Cry, yes. just real tears, because right. that's really how I felt. Right. And I would just sit there and cry, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'd have to go backstage and tell myself it's just a show, like this is not reality. And I'd right. have to like take a few deep breaths right. and calm down and right. like go back out on stage. And have you gotten so so into the, the character that you've forgotten a line? 
Um, you know, I'm sure that's happened sometime in my life. <laughs> I don't remember it being a particular problem in, right. in Lunessa, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I'm sure it's happened at some point in my life. <laughs> I can't, I can't remember a time. But. So, what was your favorite show that you did in college? Dancing at Lunessa was my really? favorite. Really? So. Just because of the experience, the experience and the emotional connection to the character. Right. But maybe f as far as like the neatest show, yeah. we did Metamorphosis. Okay. And uh, it's there's two kinds of Metamorphosis. There's the one about like the bugs. There, there's, I don't yeah, know. Right. And so <laughs> that one's called Metamorphosis. And then right. this Metamorphosis was done on Broadway, and it's about Greek mythology. Okay. And uh, it's just a very interesting, like cool show. Mm -hmm. and. You every, it's an ensemble piece, so mm -hmm. everyone plays like five or six characters. Yes. There's like mm, eight people in the cast. Okay. So each of you takes like five characters, right. and you just do different scenes, and you tie them all together with like a, right. a story. And so you'll narrate one scene, and then right. one scene that I was hunger. Right. <laughs> that was mm -hmm. the like hunger personified mm -hmm. and so you know just different various things and it was it was interesting there was a pool of water on stage because on broadway yes. on broadway really most of it takes place in this the stage pretty much is a pool of water right and there's like a walkway around it mm -hmm. um so they get out of the water but i think on Broadway, you can see into the pool of water right. from like the side, from the audience's perspective. They can mm -hmm. see underwater. Well, it's college. They don't really have the budget to turn our stage into a pool. Right. So <laughs> there was a pool of water, but it wasn't the entire stage. Okay. Right. Um, and so that it was, it was, it was cool. There was a mm -hmm. water wall. It was just a really neat set, and it was just a really neat feeling. And you know, every part was so different, and it was. Um, my freshman year, and so it was kind of like the first time that I got to complete a production mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> at a collegiate level, right. and so it was really neat. How do you do distinct characters? I mean, you, you said you have to play different characters, so how, you know, and, and usually, I mean, it's a challenge, obviously, for, for any actor, but, sure. but making them distinct. That's the difference thing. Yeah, yeah, how do you do that? Yeah, um, you know, I find when I go to make a character, mm -hmm. I try to work physicalities first mm -hmm. because if you can physically move different or mm -hmm. something like that first the audience is going to notice pick up on that right away sure, sure. so um i typically look at a character and i think like well is that person going to lead like when she walks does she lead yeah. with her her nose yes, yes or does she lead with her hips yes does yeah. she lead with her knees yes. like Mm -hmm. What does she lead with? Is she going to take big steps, little steps? Is yes. she going to, where are, are her arms most comfortable? Yes. What's, you know, like what's her power stance? What's her, right. what's her inferior stance? Yes. And so I, I look at the physicalities of the characters mm -hmm. first, and then after that, you go into more of the subtleties of how would they react to this? How would right. this, you know, and that's how I've always done it. Oh, like that's, it, uh, that's excellent. And it's not a widely <laughs> done show. Right, In right. fact, I haven't heard of anyone else doing it. Yeah. Was this a black box production or is it Um it was an a thrust stage? it was a thrust stage. Okay. It was it was a main stage production but right. one of our bigger thrust stages, right. so audience on three sides and, yes. um, yeah, so it it was intimate but I, there's still three hundred people. So yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, that's a pretty good size though. Yeah. I would call it black box now. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean <laughs> so, so what brings you to the, the Houston area? Um, well, I got married okay, while I yeah. was in college, yeah. and uh, he's an engineer. He works for Exxon, so oh my goodness, so do I. What, what, do, what department is he in? He's in the production company down at Greens Point. Production company. Okay, mm -hmm. that's interesting. I'm also at Greens Point too. Floor oh, insurance. really? Yeah. He's in I'm on the 14th five? floor, GP6. Yeah. So he's in projects. Yeah. Usually, production is, is supporting you know, projects. Yeah. Yeah. If they're in DC, otherwise they're at 800 Bell. Yeah, yeah. So well, he yeah. was he was on Bell Street yeah. for the first like two years um, right. in the develop, develop. No wait, no, no. He was production, production company, right. down there, and now he's development company. I yes. like. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't really know. He's what he does. In, he's in Let's be honest. Yeah. He just does things. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Well, how about he's, that? He yeah. does engineering things that I don't understand. That's that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <those laughs> but, numbers and things. I don't know. Uh, interesting. So okay, that's what brings you. So that's oil. what brought us down to Houston. To is, to, to Houston. Is his job. 
<laughs> We've met a lot of good folks here. There's been a lot yeah. of opportunities that it's we would not, not have had. Place. Yeah, it's, the weather can be a little hard in the summertime, you know. I like September, to refer to it as the armpit of the world. Well, <laughs> most oil places are the armpits of the world. Sorry, yeah. I don't know too many good places. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's all right. Though. Okay, so you're, you're, how long have you been in the Houston area? We moved down here just in time for Ike, so that was. 2008? Yeah, 2008. Okay, so you got here just in time for Ike. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. great. Welcome. That was great. So we were living downtown for that and yeah. uh, lived there for a little bit. Well, we lived downtown and, and in the Galleria area for a few mm. years and then we bought a house outside of town when he moved up to the Greens Point um, sure. area. So now we're more north and so I've gotten to look into some of the theaters that were more north that I was would refuse to drive through, would, would drive to when I was right. living downtown. What was your sh first show in the Houston area? It was at Theater Suburbia, and okay. I hadn't done a show in a few, like, it, it felt like it had been a long time, but maybe it really, it probably was less than a year. Mm -hmm. But uh, I went, and it was called um, Dryope and Ioli, which okay. um, is a strange title if you ask me, but it was a, it was, um, mm -hmm. A new work that they ha they knew the playwright and she yeah. had written the show and so that's pretty typical of theater suburbia. They got a lot yeah. of original plays and some of yeah. them are pretty good actually. I mean, it's far from me, uh, but uh, yeah, we've done that every every now and then to like mm -hmm. to see some different things. Yeah. They've been around a long time. Yeah, like, it's 40, it has 50 been years. Around. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it was nice. It's a small theater. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And I think because they do some of the lesser known yes. things, and, you know, it's just it's a different experience. Sure. So mm -hmm. it was nice. After that, what did you do? I um, waited a while, um, and then I did Once Upon a Mattress, Okay. and that was with Fort Bend Theater. That's a good distance. Well, were you When I downtown? lived downtown, oh, yeah. okay, okay. I was downtown still, so okay. it was one of the only theaters in the area that was doing musicals at the time, and I really okay. wanted to do a musical, because right, right. <laughs> even in college, it had been a while since I, I did Pippin, and kind of, and then I did You're in Town, mm -hmm. and then... I didn't do another musical until Once Upon a Mattress, and it had right. been a while, so right. um, I did that at Fort Bend Theater, and that's where I met Louis Crespo, who okay. is Prince Charming. Yes. Now. <laughs> we will get to we'll get, yeah, to we'll get there. We'll get to Okay, so that's how you know Louis, yeah. That's how I know Louis. Um, so I did that, and then, um, then I didn't do anything for a while again, mm -hmm. and uh, we moved up north. And I found Houston Family Arts Center, yes. which is pretty close to my house. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So um, I have done three shows with them. I mm -hmm. did Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and then I did The Sound of Music. Yeah. Was that last year? Oklahoma was last year, right? Yeah. This is all within the last year. because We I, probably, probably saw it and didn't even realize it. Yeah. yeah we, I we was, were there last year. I was one center. of the featured dancers in Oklahoma. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then we did The Sound of Music, mm -hmm. and I was Liesl. Yeah. And then we did Susicle. Okay. And I was one of the bird girls, one of the sassy little birds. <laughs> so, yeah. So which brings us now to, what brings you to the Crichton? To the Crichton Theater. I thought, you know, I've never been up here, I might as well go see what they're all about. And um, Lewis actually told me that he worked with Debbie Schultz, the mm -hmm. director, and he said, you know, she's a great director, I think you'll like her. Mm -hmm. And he said he was going to audition, and so he asked asked me if I'd like to audition with him, so that's what brought me up here. Oh, well, you're welcome to the, the Crichton. Yeah. Cinderella, what? And, you, and you got Cinderella, so that's fine. So, yeah. So tell us about getting ready for Cinderella. Getting ready for Cinderella was fun. I It was fun watching old like YouTube clips from the from the Julie Andrews mm -hmm. version yes. of Cinderella and then, I, and then the 60s version, I forget what her name was. Um, but anyway, I watched yeah. some of the old clips, right. and uh, and of course some of the Brandy clips, and that of was course, funny. Of course, so I yes. kind of like watched those and giggled a little bit. I take most of the time when I watch things with a grain of salt, because I don't yes. like to just copy someone. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Not. So uh, I, I watched them and you know got more familiar with the music, because I'd never mm. actually seen, a, other than the movies, like the Brandy version sure. right. on Disney Channel, I'd right. never actually seen Cinderella done on stage, and so I mm. wanted to at least familiarize myself with the music, so that was fun, and, uh, and I just took, I chose one of my favorite audition pieces and just came and told myself to relax and audition. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> well, it's kind of interesting, you know, we, we uh, talked about, uh, we haven't talked about interacting with, with uh, some of the, the, the actors. Each show is different, you know, like from, from externally, 
show could go great, at least from the, the patron's point of view. But then there's always the, you know, how did the, the cast cut along? Sometimes they gel, sometimes, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they don't, yeah. And, 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 but the, the, the patrons don't necessarily know that. No. Well, they, they don't really care. If you're doing right. your job right, the patrons should know. Yeah, they, 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 they shouldn't know. <laughs> they shouldn't know the difference if you know. But when you were volunteering, you know, basically all you have is your experience. You know, uh -huh. so it, it's the new people that you meet and things like that. Uh -huh. Which is interesting compared to, say, some of the other uh, shows that I know. This cast seems to have gelled early. Yeah, you know, it's, I think there's a few people that have known each other from mm -hmm. this and that. But right. I, I'd say for the most part, most people knew maybe like one or two people coming into right. it and uh strange i think we just all get along and mm -hmm. we're all a little goofy so that that helps we have it's fun like, yeah. yeah get a bunch of goofy people together and you'll mm -hmm. have fun well this is the first time doing some, something for stage right mm -hmm. um let's go back to like say different techniques how do you um uh, you get back to adapting to cinderella are you do you get to pull on any techniques that you learned in college or like that since that time have you evolved and just come up with different things of your own or adapting character? Yeah, you know, I mean, we're still at the point where we're kind of just now getting off book and everything. Right. So I haven't gotten like too deep into my character yet. Um, actually, I've very rarely been just the like classic female heroine character. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's an interesting experience for me to just be a normal person, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I mean, really, like, it's it's strange. Um, so I've been, as of right now, I've just been feeling it out. I've just been sure. delivering the lines to the most genuine way I feel it at the moment. Right. And then I'm just trying to see what's working and what's not right now. Right. So <laughs> that's, that's where I'm at at the moment is just being genuine mm -hmm. to how I probably would Sure, view the situation absolutely. and yep. seeing if it's appropriate or inappropriate for Cinderella. <laughs> sure, sure. I, and, and if it is genuine, it'll come across. Yeah. Well, and you know, if you throw off your, you know, the other actor, like right. there's something, you'll, there's times that I'll, I'll say it, you know, align a certain way and I'm like, that's not going to work for him. <laughs> that gives him nothing to feed off of, right. you know, or whatever. So it's, it's trial and error right now. <laughs> well, well, it's interesting too, because uh, it's a drama, you know, people know, okay, yeah, we've got to really work on character. And as a musical, and especially musical comedy, I guess you could cheat. You, you, don't, you know, you could get away with doing less in characterization. Mm -hmm. And it still would probably come off all right. Yeah, I guess my goal, though, is for the audience to, to see Cinderella as like a real person. Yeah. And, and really, really feel what she feels with her. Because she's, out of all the characters in the show, she's definitely the least funny. <laughs> so, I mean, she's Cinderella, so she right, has right. some dramatic moments. Sure. She's, she doesn't have a lot of, like, you know, but a bum lines. Right, right, like, right, it's just, right, right. <laughs> it's not how she is written. Right. So, I think my goal as Cinderella is to have the audience feel what she's feeling. Mm -hmm. Like, they should just want her to get that kiss so right. bad mm -hmm. that even if she's saying cheesy lines, mm -hmm. it's totally okay. <laughs> <laughs> what roles would you like to do going forward? Um, you know, I always just look for roles that'll be challenging or new to me. And Cinderella was new to me because mm -hmm. I've never been mm -hmm. that just classic female heroine yeah. before. So, so I, I was excited for that. Uh, roles looking forward, you know, I don't know. I, I have been wanting to get back into just some more like dramatic theater because I haven't sure. done a sure. straight up show sure. on musical for a while. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what. What about comedy? Oh, I love comedy. <laughs> love it. I it's, it's, it seems to be what I usually get cast mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. is the comedic role, but. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I'll just have to kind of see what's going on around Houston and <laughs> look at it. Your, your husband, does, does he get into uh, helping out with shows or he's just like, okay, you know, <laughs> where's Kathleen? Okay, I, yeah, she's at rehearsal. Yeah, yeah at... you know, we have a nice dynamic and I appreciate it between the two of us. Mm. He and I kind of just have our own things. Like, we have things we do together. We play on the co-ed softball team sure. together mm. and stuff like that, but we also have some some things that are, it's just that's yours and this is mine and that's okay and we're going to support each other right. and you know and we're happy to be there for each other kind of thing and so this theater is my thing he he did a show once in oh high yeah school. what he did, did he do okay he did he did uh, about the town of like all the uh anyway he put he was yeah. in a neil simon show in, okay. in high school and uh, his high school didn't put a lot of stock into performing arts okay. um they were they were more of like a 
down home country school. Okay. <laughs> so they liked their football team. And no, that's Texas. Yeah, we like our football teams. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of the same in, in rural Kansas. Um, they put a lot of stock into academics. Mm -hmm. um, he did debate in okay. high school and went to nationals with that. And, wow. Yeah. So um, anyway, yeah, he um, did that one show, but he never really saw a lot of theater, I think, until we started dating, and then, right. you know, I was like, you've never seen Ray Miserable? Well, we're going! And like, well, well, he started. comes to your shows, of course, right? Yeah, oh, oh yeah. yeah, he has Absolutely. to come, he has to come to my show, unless he has a very valid excuse, right. like he's in Africa for work or right, something, right, right. which has happened. Yeah. He's missed a good number of my shows, but, but because he was not in the same yeah. country. Right, well, okay, yeah. So, I think it's, yeah. That's okay. fine. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if you have to go. You're gonna have work. <laughs> Is he in the power tools? Uh, well, kind of. Yeah, if he were, we might have to get him to do a set construction. <laughs> like, you know, because we've got a lot of folks that, uh, you, know, we, you know, and it's true of other theaters as, as well. You know, some folks, you know, they're just into set. You know, they, they're here for strike. That's what yeah. they're thing. All right, we're here for set construction. We got a guy. We call him Clamp Man Clamp because man. <laughs> because he puts clamps everywhere. But he's great. He, that's he, awesome. and, as, and he just shows up, for, yeah, for set construction. That's his thing. That's awesome. And you need you need a little bit of everyone. Oh yeah, <laughs> obviously. You, you need people that you gotta have people that are just as happy to be off the stage as on the stage. So that's yeah. He's he's good though. He's a supportive husband. <laughs> uh, if heaven exists, what do you want God to say when you get to heaven? Uh, way to go. That's you know. Just want him to be happy with me. Yeah, good. Give you a hug. <laughs> give me a hug. Tell me I was mostly a nice person. Saw you later, like show. Yeah, yeah, good job. Yeah, that was good. Cinderella. <laughs> Let's hope that's not your final show. <laughs> yeah, we'll hope not. I'd be a, some sort of tragic ending to something if it's yeah. my last show. Oh, no. Well, yeah, ice is a heck of a way to be introduced to the Houston area. Yeah, but welcome to the Houston area. We're glad to have you. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thank you.